So here we are chatting about true customer success. So for those of you that don't know my background, I started out as a high school math teacher. I'm not shy about that. So that's why people join the call and tell me that they've are, that I've already assigned them homework because <laughs> I very much that is that is part of my core my core values is to assign homework. Uh, but along with that, uh, I say first as a teacher, um, you're often an English to English translator, right? And I think that is what managed service providers do. I also think that is what the customer success team specifically, be it be them, be they a VCIO or a TAM or an account manager, I think the customer facing folks in the technology industry very much um, are are English to English translators, right? You're doing consulting for your partners about how to make their business better through the thoughtful use of technology. So that is why I think my background as a teacher uh, comes into play. When I left education, I went into the ed tech space. So I ran customer success for an assessment and analytics platform. So I have always been a, a, a tech geek, a data geek, uh, although I've never been an MSP and I don't pretend to play one on TV for sure, but I do appreciate data. And I especially appreciate data around some of the squishier side of the house, right? The customer side of the house, which is what we're going to look at today. Um, you know, when I left ed tech, uh, so I, I, we got acquired th four times in the company that I worked for. So my team, we went from 60 employees to 150 to 450 to 1500. So my team of customer success managers ran a healthy sum of QBRs in their day. And so I've seen a lot of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and when we were out looking, the developers and I were looking for a problem to solve, right? We ran into an MSP, Alex Farling, who uh, who said he spent time doing uh, building a QBR that day. And could we solve that problem? So we started Lifecycle Insights with the VCIO platform. And the more we talked to managed service providers, the more there were consistent questions around tracking happy, healthy customers, really being able to focus toward customer goals and driving stack alignment pieces. So I had talked about stack alignment kind of before the holiday. So if you're thinking, oh, I want to know what was said about stack alignment, uh, I, we, I have that recorded on YouTube. So you can, you can grab the link there and feel free to reach out to me and just say, hey, can you make sure to send me that? I'm happy to. Um, but today we wanted to talk about some of those other components. So health and effort and angles. Uh, one thing I will add as I'm talking through these pieces, uh, you know, a lot of these pieces, as I've mentioned, can be done manually. They can be done in a spreadsheet. We're aiming to automate more and more of this. And there are some of these components we're talking about today that we're actually building some more feature functionality to. So if any of that intrigues you, be sure to be sure to listen in as we go along. But the first thing we're going to talk about is the notion of effort and health. So I want to show you what that looks like in the platform before we, we actually start brainstorming what you may want to be thinking about in your MSP. So up here on the upper left-hand um, quadrant, I'm sorry, upper left-hand tile on the dashboard, is there are four quadrants. And we define this as value along the horizontal axis versus effort. So for value, now part of our goal is to automate as much of this as we can. So we automate with MRR or MRR per seat for... Um, ConnectWise Manage and Auto Task Partners. They have those fields we can pull over easily. For effort, we automate um, by ticket count. So tickets or tickets per seat, you can choose on, on that. And we're going to talk more about what else might fall into effort metrics, but that is how folks land on this graph. So if you have MRR and tickets associated to it, we're going to land in these quadrants and they're going to be colored gray. As we think about these quadrants, right, Top right, we talk about high value, high effort clients. These get your quarterly business review. So many, many, I've had many calls this week with folks who are spending this week talking about who gets a quarterly business review next year, who gets a semi-annual, who gets an annual. The end goal would be for all of your clients to need and deserve quarterly business reviews, but that would be that they warrant one as well, right? So a lot of folks... Uh, you know, if they're driving the right full stack alignment with the appropriate seat cost, they may all be getting quarterly business reviews. But I talk to many MSPs who business, businesses look more like this 
where their bottom left quadrant is low value, low effort, and they need to work on how to move the needle. So maybe this lower left quadrant um, would be more automation, maybe an annual business review. Bottom right quadrant, high value, low effort. These are our favorite ones. Do we have a process in place to get referrals from these folks? Top left, high effort, low value. So if you've read the book, Pumpkin Plan, that's all about pruning those pumpkins that aren't going to, pruning those blossoms that aren't going to make good pumpkins. Uh, so this would be the folks that either need to, you need to renegotiate their contract. You need to figure out uh, what's causing their pain, that they are such a pain of a client uh, and help get them more automated, or maybe they're the ones you fire. So that, hef that effort metric is one of the pieces we want to talk about. And then these dots are, and points are colored based on health score. So the automated health score right now is CSAT. So we have an automation with Smileback. For the record, crew who's come in shortly behind, and I think Smileback will be, or I mean, sorry, Simple Sat will be the next one. We already have Smileback. Um, so, so that's how we're getting the automation in place. But we're going to talk about maybe there are some other places where we have manual metrics. So that's the first notion of what we're talking about and looking about, be, looking at because we really want to define our customer segments and then define what we need to do in each segment, right? What's the appropriate work that needs to happen for each along the way? And then the other piece that we're going to talk about, and I, you'll see the same screenshot of this later, is within a client, what are the goals and what are you doing to approach those goals? Um, so one of you on the call will recognize this as you uh, you let me quote this in our in the book, and uh, and I will use your story along the way. So the goal piece is, you know, if you talk to any of the business coaches, they will talk about the customer side of the house for managed service providers is all about business consulting again through the thoughtful use of technology. So we need to align our recommendations, our budget forecasts, and all of our conversations with our partners around their goals to help show that technology is driving their business. So how we track that in the platform and how we can have that conversation if this is a new notion is something we really want to consider along the way. We'll come back in the platform later. So I just wanted to give you an overview if folks are just looking at this for the first time, get a sense of what it looks like in life cycle. We're going to talk probably, hopefully folks will talk with me or at least chat with me um, for the next 10, 15 minutes or so about some of these components and things to think about in your business as we're looking to 2023. And then at the end, if folks want to stay on so they can see actual button clicks of how to put this in the platform, if you are a customer success user, then um, I'll jump back into the platform for that. So just keep that in mind, um, depending on why you came to the call, will probably determine the outcome of what you are aiming for. So let me go ahead and share, not share, that's not what I wanted to do, hit the presentation. There we go. You would think it was the first day on Zoom or PowerPoint, but I think we all know it is in fact not. So today we're going to, again, look at identifying effort metrics, look at identifying health metrics, and list potential customer goals and how they relate to recommendations so that you can have, drive those conversations in QBRs. We have many folks that ask us, what should I add to my agenda for a business review? And we would always say, you need to focus your business review on your customer's business, not on your business. Think about n number of holiday parties that you may or may not have gone or be going to this week. If someone just sits there and talks about the, themselves the entire time, how do you feel at that party compared to someone that engages everyone else and says, hey, you know, what, what are you doing this week at work? Or how has work been for you? Or how are things at home? Or, you know, how is, how's the new puppy? Whatever it might be where they engage you. QBRs are no different in setting them up than, than having small talk at a family gathering where folks are more interested in talking about their concerns than they are in your business, right? So, so the customer goal piece is really a focus that I think drives the conversations in business reviews. Again, I've seen good, bad, and ugly. So I have absolutely been skewered by ticket autopsies and know that there are ways to avoid that by setting up business reviews properly. So let's jump in first 
Uh, I said all is fair in love and war, but not customer success. So it's not all even Stephen here. So I am referencing um, Gainsight. So Gainsight is one of the first leaders in SaaS related customer success programs. So SaaS companies, software companies, try to determine if their clients are happy, healthy clients based on metrics because they don't often speak to them. Subscription services, not managed services, but subscription services for software, right? When you sign up for any application, Adobe or Canva or Salesforce or HubSpot, how do they know if you're going to stay the next month, right? So there's a lot of power uh, in terms of investment and your company looking powerful, um, with subscription services, but they wanted to begin to start tracking whether or not their companies were happy and healthy, their clients were. So Gainsight is one of the first software-based um, customer success platforms. The ideas behind that is what made us think, you know, MSPs need an MSP-focused customer success platform. So um, my customer success team uh, got to pick a book uh, that they wanted to read around customer success, and we opted for this one, The Customer Success Professionals Handbook. And uh, this is written by the Gainsight team and some other folks. And one of the things that Gainsight has said, and I've even made t-shirts that have this quote on it, is the equation at the top there. CS equals CX plus CO. And this is mission critical. So this is customer success equals customer experience, what it's like to work with your company, plus CO, customer outcomes. Are they getting what they expected? Is the technology delivering what they wanted them to deliver? So healthy is exactly what you would expect. Yep, we like working with them. Yep, we're getting what we expected. That is a healthy client. What I thought was interesting in this book is if they are easy to work with and you have a good relationship with them, but they're not delivering business outcomes, if you are manually basing this on just a human gut instinct of whether these people like me, that client is potentially at risk and often mislabeled as healthy. I thought that was important to note. Do you have folks, have you ever been blindsided by someone that you quite liked that canceled your services? If you think about it, were they not getting some outcomes, but they were pleasant to work with, so you didn't really see it coming? The next one is a blindside in a different way. This is when you don't really have a personal relationship with them, but everything seems to be churning along, right? They just auto renew and everything seems to be done. You don't have a bad relationship with them, but you also don't have an overly positive one where you can track specific metrics toward them. What this book references is that these are a threat for a true blindside situation where you didn't see it coming because you've sort of commoditized yourself. If you don't have engagement uh, and a relationship to ensure you're helping them be successful to their goals and having the conversation that you're achieving their goals with them, they may think of it as a commodity and therefore just go look for a cheaper solution. So it's these two pieces together. Clearly, if you don't have either the positive customer experience or a positive customer outcome, yikes, that's, that's they're probably already a churn for you. But I think it's important to think about both of these pieces. The experience, are they happy, healthy with the work, the relationship, right? Are things smooth? Do they put in tickets because they're trying to get work done, but not escalations and fires? Or are they silent? That's also dangerous. And then the outcomes. Are we driving toward their goals or are we just trying to sell them our services? That's what we want to think about in this conversation. So I already showed this chart, but here it is up close and personal, right? We're going to track value versus effort and segment our customers. So the effort piece is the first component we want to talk about. So in Lifecycle Insights, I mentioned that the very first thing we pull over is number of tickets or tickets per um, tickets per seat. Would love to hear in the chat what are other things that folks might consider to be effort. What makes a client hard to support or easy to support? Like, oh, I know these will be easy because I know this will be 
these guys are going to be a struggle because X, Y, or Z. What are some examples of that? You can put it in the chat to everyone, or you can just chat to me. Or you can come off mute. Uh, let me let me turn some other folks off of, let me allow everyone to talk if you're interested. All right, everybody should be able to come off mute if you want. Okay, I have, I have one chat to me. Um, so number of tickets is one. Uh, the one in the chat is, yeah. All right, I have two that say the same now, multiple locations, absolutely. Um, so expansion, multiple locations. Other things that make folks a challenge to support right out of the gate. So interesting, this one uh, I often hear in health, but also a good one for effort, whether or not they're aligned to your, they kind of believe their technology belief or sentiment. Do they believe in being fully aligned to your stack of services? Um, or are they insisting on kind of just a almost break fix, grabbing a piece here or there? Uh, line of business applications, excluding Microsoft 365. Yes. So if you have other other applications that you're supporting along the way. So the important thing to think about here is, and I'm actually going to jump back into the platform for a second so that we can look at, at what this looks like. Is that as we're looking at effort, you can really define multiple areas that might make a client hard to support. So I mentioned we pull over tickets automatically, right? But is that a good definition? And tickets per seat is probably an even a, a closer one because a hundred end user versus 10 end user, you would hope that they have different number of tickets to support, right? Um, but what other types of things uh, impact that score? Are, are there other ways you would want to average this? So here are some examples of what folks um, number of locations. So that was mentioned in the chat. Uh, line of business application. I don't have that one specifically listed, but we could certainly add it. Um, stack alignment. So that one is one that we kind of talked about. What, um, you know, how aligned are they to your stack? The more they're aligned to your stack, the less effort they actually are. For effort, our stack calculation is actually the inverse. So if they're 87% aligned in my stack, they're only 13% effort because they've got our supportable, scalable services. You can see some other things that folks use, um, a maturity model security assessment, so a risk assessment. Are they a risky client? Um, and what's the last one down there? Number of contract hours used. So how how many, you know, how close are they to, to the hours that they kind of sort of already contracted for? So if you're looking at aiming to drive that, um, you know, this chart again, and you wanted to see who the high effort clients were, multiple locations, you might want to average that with the number of tickets, because that's going to make them harder to support. Maybe if they are high compliance, right? A department of defense is automatically going to be higher effort than a florist shop, just based on the number of requirements that they have to follow, right? Just to get cybersecurity liability insurance, for example. So thinking about effort as one of the first ways to kind of segment who gets what type of business review is, is an important factor to think about. The next one I mentioned is health. And with health, it is, why are these red, yellow, green, right? Um, what makes them happy, what makes them unhappy, et cetera. I mentioned that the first piece of automation we have is their CSAT score. But if you think about customer satisfaction, that's only a single point in time, right? Um, and it's really a single instance, like that single ticket. That That's not how they feel about your entire stack. MPS might work a little bit better about, you know, do they would they recommend you to a friend type of thing? But what are some other things around health that you know this customer is happy with your services? What would you put for that? I'll do the awkward pause to let folks think about 
I know a client's going to stay with me forever if they fill in the blank. I have two of these in my chat. So let's see if uh, if you were thinking these, even if you didn't respond back. Again, the adoption of stack kind of leads to its health. Do you have a means now of tracking engagement of their leadership? Um, one of the things that we're looking at putting in the platform next year is the notion of being able to score a QBR um, and rate both a global, every QBR gets rated on kind of the, the, the fact that I've got the right people in the business review. I've got um, the number, the percentage of recommendations that they're accepting, their engagement, their attendance, et cetera. So that would be a good sign of overall health that everybody would expect to see. So we're already thinking toward some of these health metrics and folks wanting to score business reviews. Um, some other things we see folks do with health in the platform, do they respond to emails, right? Are they engaged with you? Even if you're, they're not necessarily, there's a difference between they answer my emails, they come to business reviews, right? Is there a combo platter that would really help to define a good health, happy, healthy metric? Again, CSAT scores, NPS, are they willing to provide referrals for you? Um, do, does the customer call for advice? I remember when I was a customer success manager, there was a grant uh, in our state and school systems could request the funds if they used it for specific types of um, student needs. And I had a couple of system, assistant um, superintendents call and say, how could we use this to solve our problem? And they wanted me to steer them toward the right technology solution that would help them support the data that they needed. So I think that if a customer is calling for advice uh, on what technology would, would be helpful for them, that's a strong, healthy um, customer. You can tell my, my monitor is uh, behind my computer. Strong uh, internal champion, right? Do you have a project team that works well with you and they maybe you know really advocate for you within the company? And have they offered referrals to you in the past? So in life cycle, the idea is to think about the minimum number of these metrics that you need to be able to determine a happy, healthy client. You could probably list a ton more, right? But the critical piece is if you had two or three of these that you could average together and say like, all right, I've got yellow, yellow, green, that's probably a yellow. Would that give you information that you could take action on, right? If somebody suddenly turned red uh, on a Monday morning, would you say, oh, you know, this is one of my top tier clients and they just went red. I need to take action on it. So how are you currently scoring kind of who needs to get some attention based on health? So that's the purpose of using health. Uh, as you're looking at your whole client base. Again, the more you have it segmented, the more clients you have, the more important this is to have a method for this because you can't keep track of every individual client every individual day, right? So if you have teams of folks that are doing business reviews, are all of your account managers able to say at any given moment, I know that 90% of my clients are going to auto renew. They're going to renew next year. And I've got half of the remaining that are questionable. We need to have a conversation with and half I really think are going to churn. Can you define that right now? Or is it just a faith-based operation on, I don't know how, you know, how we're going to get eyes on this, uh, but we're hoping everybody, you know, everybody renews for the next year. When I, when I first started customer success, I ran Maryland and my uh, the business owner ran Florida. We had each gotten a huge account. So we spent all week, mine was a $1.4 million account. His was a $2.1 million account. And we spent all week, every week, really focused on that account. 
we each had other accounts in the state, um, but for the most part, the daily work that happened was on those large accounts. On Friday afternoon, my third week, the owner called me and said, and started listing all of my other accounts, How's Howard, Harford, Queen Anne, Talbot, et cetera. And I would have to go through and list each one and if they were happy, healthy, et cetera. Now this is Friday at 5.30 when I had middle school and high school age children that I'm trying to juggle, get out the door, get to games, et cetera. The second Friday that this happened, same thing. Like how's, the third time I finally had a spreadsheet that I'd shared with them and said, okay, here are all of my clients. Here's who's green, here's who's yellow. And everybody who's red, we've already talked about and we have an action plan in place, right? So part of defining health for your clients is so that first, when the, the owner comes in and takes a look at the accounts, they know who's happy, healthy, and they know who needs to have actions taken on them. So whether or not you're doing this in the platform uh, across all of your account managers or keeping a sheet yourself of who's happy, healthy, it is important to define for your company what healthy looks like so that when you start missing some of those pieces, you have a trigger to take an action. When I think of health metrics, I also think of red flags. So I did this with one of our, with some of our partners on a weekly workshop, maybe a year and a half ago, where we said, what are some things that could happen that would mean you would immediately want to get your leadership team on a call with a client because you felt like they were in jeopardy? The first two that came to mind straight away were change of leadership. So the company, was acquired or they were getting a new CEO, you would immediately want to have a business review with that client. Um, they might have, you know, a nephew, their favorite IT provider, et cetera, that's gonna, that they plan to bring in with you, with them. And you need to see if your relationships at jeopardy there. The other one that immediately came to mind is if somebody is suddenly asking for all the credentials to the keys to the kingdom uh, that they haven't asked for before, right? So our partners told us if either of those two things happened, I would immediately want to have a conversation with them. Another interesting piece is thinking about a recession. You want to have a conversation with your clients as we look toward potential recession to determine if you think their business is stable, right? Prior to COVID, uh, did folks think, well, that restaurant might not make it um, versus, you know, now that people weren't eating out, right? That became a risk. So that entire vertical became a threat. So those are the types of things we want to consider as we're defining. Again, there are two pieces. You want to look overall as you're going to have conversations with them, who's happy, healthy, but the other pieces are for folks who are red, what actions can we take? For folks for a green, who are green, are there places you can get referrals? Because those are kind of your ideal clients. So that's why we want to look at health metrics and track them um, because everybody's not the same. And we really want to figure out for ourselves what our ideal clients are. And they are our happiest, healthiest ones. Um, the last piece, and we'll go look at this in the platform, is to really focus on customer goals. So let's look at this one example. If the customer has told you, I want to grow through acquisition, Creative Designs is focused on acquiring a competitor in the next year and it, adding at least two new acquisitions each year following. Can you picture the types of projects that you could recommend and consult with them as to what, what work they would need to do moving forward? So this is absolutely one that a life cycler um, let us use. So first, they need to collect information in order to develop the stack that would be appropriate for this client, right? So one of the tasks that needs to be done is gather information from the points of contact. But another would be to outline a proposal for a go forward plan. So let's define a technology and security standard for new acquisitions to determine a clear path moving for new acquiring, newly acquired companies moving forward. So if you think about that, by aligning the question in your business review to their goal, we've now determined that every time they get a new acquisition, your plan is to rip and replace 
and use the defined stack that you've already established for that company. So there's really a longevity component associated to the fact that your, your client wants to grow through acquisition and you have a plan every time it happens for how you're going to help them. Again, if the notion of new leadership is a potential churn risk, you're establishing a strong stance in where you are with the company moving forward. So the company that's getting acquired is more likely to lose their IT company than the company that is doing the acquiring, right? So these are important questions to ask along the way. We also have a recommendation at the bottom to define, develop a playbook uh, for gathering the information. So these types of services, right? You can see that all of these components uh, can be used to define work, projects, services, tasks that need to be done, but that help drive your client's um, end goal. And if you start with their goal in mind, the natural conclusion when you get to the work that needs to be done is just send over the proposal so we can assign it and approve it. It's not a debate as to whether or not that needs to happen. So I think that's really important. Uh, people ask me regularly, what are some ways we can get the business to talk about their business instead of just um, coming to them and say, I wanted to talk about, you know, three new layers of the security onion that I wanted to, you know, wanted to share with you. So um, I wrote a book with Juan Fernandez, who's grown some MSPs quite successfully. And one of the things that he would do is send out this checklist in advance of a business review and uh, ask them to check the one that he would say, send the top three that are most important to you. So in the next year, are you aiming to drive growth, uh, looking for new customer base, employee satisfaction, introduction of new products and services, increase operational efficiency and processes? Frankly, that is where MSPs absolutely can save companies time and money. So if they check this one, uh, that's an in for a conversation. Increase profitability, improve data collection metrics, reduce costs, expansion, or increase technology usage for the products they already use, right? In terms of healthy clients, they are healthy if they're using the services that they already have. We have many folks say, well, you know, we give them the full stack, but they haven't implemented half of them. So that is a, a healthy move, even if it doesn't sell a new project to get for a stickier client. So that's kind of the way to look and think about goals. So those are the three components we wanted to talk about, right? How can we define some effort metrics? How can we define some health metrics? And how can we think about customer goals that will really help us achieve our goals, which is upselling to our stack and services. So now I'm going to go into the Lifecycle's customer success platform and walk through how to define these components in the platform. Uh, and we might get a couple other ideas along the way. Any questions or comments before I jump all the way in? If you have them, feel free to shout them out, but I'm going to go ahead and um, and move on. When you first uh, jump in to the platform, if you have not set up your contracts for your MRR uh, and your tickets for effort, this top left quadrant will be blank. So that is one of the first things you'll want to do from the VCIO side of the house. That is why we encourage folks to have VCIO side set up before you um, before you look at the customer success module. But in customer success account settings down here, this is where we're gonna define some of our metrics. I'm gonna jump over to the effort and health admin. And the first thing that comes up is the customer health score. So right out of the gate, you'll need to add one. You won't have any, right? This screen will be blank. And when you go to add a metric, you can see that we've got a couple automations and then we have the ability to create a custom metric. So if I wanted to import from an assessment, so maybe I decided that my, my stack assessment or my standard assessment really determines the health of a client. The more aligned they are 
to my technology standards and best practices, the healthier they are. You can absolutely select which template uh, you, you normally score against, uh, give it a description, select an icon and a weight, et cetera. And that will automatically pull over um, those assessment scores. So that is one way to automate it. Uh, so here, this is the um, the cybersecurity. We have two assessments, the cyber insurance prep powered by fifth wall assessment, the default assessment that we're populating over here. The other automated one is Smileback CSAT. So here would be they grabbed Smileback and you can determine the time period. So if you, again, after Smileback, we'll have Kruhu and then SimpleSat. I think Biz Ratings is also on the list. So those would be, again, metrics we could automate into the health score. You can choose the period of time. Do you want the last rolling 30 days, three months, six months, et cetera? Um, again, icon and waiting. The waiting is important because maybe you say, well, CSAT's important, but really their technology stack alignment is twice as important. So you can double weight these to get the score that you're aiming for. Or you can add a custom metric. So this custom metric means that you will be manually entering these scores. You can see on this list, we have a few custom metrics like sentiment, for example. So remember at the beginning, I talked about customer experience and customer outcomes. And the experience is what the relationship feels like. Is that going smoothly? So my customer success team every week always had to score their clients on sentiment. Now, if they hadn't met with their client, you know, some of the clients were on more of a monthly cadence or even quarterly of when they were tracking that. But any calls that they made that week, they then had to give a sentiment score and that averaged in with the other metrics to determine an overall health score. Um, the uh, the org score at the bottom is the one where, are there any org changes? And this one, so if you don't score it, it's ignored in the math. So we would leave that blank unless there was a red flag. Change in leadership, uh, they weren't funded their budget, right? They were in municipality and funding got cut. That type of thing would be a red flag that would put customer health at risk. So if you want to go in and see what um, an individual company view looks like, I'll click that one in a minute. If you accidentally deleted one, you can recover it here. So let me click into the company view. So now I'm in creative designs health and you can see their scores. So I haven't scored this assessment for creative designs. So no no scoring comes over, but they have done a default assessment and their most recent score is a 59% manually entered sentiment. You can see their smile back score, et cetera. You can see their um, health score track over time. And if you hover over their health score, you'll actually see if you've done weighted metrics, it'll actually give you the calculation to how it got that overall score. So that is how we're aiming for a health score. That's what colors the client red, yellow, or green. The same idea works for your effort score. So in the effort metric, again, this is typically, if you just grab um, any of the automated ones, it would be import from assessment again, import the number of tickets or import the number of locations, which Gary, you had put in the chat, number of locations could impact half or effort. You can add multiples of these. So you can have all of these things. Again, the goal is to narrow it down to the ones that really are a good definition for effort for you. Most of our partners start with number of tickets or tickets per seat. As a matter of fact, let's, let's click into tickets so you can see how to adjust this. You can decide number of tickets per company or maybe number of tickets per seat, the period of time. Um, we're going to actually show you the ticket average in my demo site. It's a little crazy. And you can say, do I want it per company or is it per user within the company? And you can select the actual boards that it comes from. So I would probably want to ignore, um, you know, my professional services tickets, or maybe I want to keep my professional services tickets, whatever your board structure is or queue structure, depending on what your PSA is, um, will allow you to get this metric. And that is a great place to start as folks 
start really looking at that effort and seeing who lands in what quadrant, that's where you might want to add, uh, maybe I want to add the location score, or maybe I want to add a different effort score. Um, or again, you can always define your own effort. But the ones that we will automate as an assessment, number of tickets, number of locations. So health and effort are done very similarly. When I go to the company view, the screen will look very similar. Um, same, you can check the scoring. You can see the individual scores. Uh, and this is where you can say, okay, they're actually in a much better place. Um, so I can increase that score. Number of tickets, if it is automated, it'll just let you, you don't get to edit that. Um, and so you can kind of see the components here and they'll let you know which assessment they have used. So again, health and effort are very similar. So feel free to throw in any questions if you have them on either health or effort, because the, the, the computation of that is very similar in the platform. I will keep checking messages, but the last piece we really want to talk about is the goal component. So um, we have a, quite a few enhancements coming to goals this year, so I'm very excited um, to see where this is heading. Uh, I think uh, we have. I think this component is really going to drive the whole, tying together VCIO and customer success um, very nicely. If I wanted to add a new goal for my client, I could decide. You know, they were interested in productivity solutions, and they are aiming to downsize staff um, with additional technology. You can add a due date if you have it. And once you have set up that goal, uh, you've got a few opportunities. So tasks would be just an internal, um, you know, I need to review their existing stack. Again, I can assign myself a date or not, uh, but you can also, I can always add new, new tasks here or here. I can link to an existing recommendation. So if there was a recommendation, um, a budget balancing recommendation, for example, maybe that's something that a review of their budget is something I wanted to do. Uh, or I can also link to an existing contract. So if I had a contract for, um, just our managed services, and that was aligned to this particular goal, I can now track all of my work toward achieving their goal. Um, you can see we've got the little count, zero out of one task done, et cetera. We're starting to define the reporting around an overall score of, okay, you're 50% of the way through the tasks for this particular goal. So if you think about building kind of a strategic plan for each of your partners and aligning your recommendations and contracts to their end goal, that really drives the conversation. Again, talking about their business instead of just pieces and parts that you wanted to sell. So that is how to set up those particular components inside of Lifecycle. If you're a current customer success partner, we're going to have a full boot camp where we will actually walk through it with you um, starting at the end of the month. So for sure, reach out, let me know if you would be interested in that piece. We're always happy to hop on a call. I've had many calls with teams of folks where we actually went and brainstormed their health metrics, their effort metrics, uh, and, and a process for how they were going to start tracking these pieces and what they wanted to make sure was in life cycle. So we'd be happy to do that anytime. Um, and if you have any questions of getting any of the tactical pieces into the platform, um, I think... I recognize so many of you on the call. I suspect you already have my email, but if you do not, it's marnie at marnie.stockman at lifecycleinsights.io. And I'm happy to jump on a call with you and walk you through any of those pieces or parts. So any questions for me today or, uh, or comments, criticisms, complaints, as we like to say? You're welcome. Oh my God, I uh, and you're welcome. Thank you. Well, hopefully that is something to chew on. A lot of folks um, 
I know as you start the new year are looking for ways to further define kind of those those customer facing metrics. So hopefully yeah, that gave you some things to stew on and uh, reach out anytime. If you have questions, I will be sure to share this recording. Um, and again, happy to chat if, uh, if you have questions for me. Hope everybody has a good one and I will uh, see you next year. <laughs>